Welcome back, everyone. We're going to do another one take today. It's been a while, but I figured it was about time I showed you some more live games rather than just uploading some of the best results I get. So today we're looking at the Conqueror. This is the next ship in order of release. And I made a video recently talking about how I think this ship was the beginning of the problem. And that really went, came down to the high explosive. This is the commander I'm using. I do think uh, Grease the Gears would be very, very useful here. Um, in fact, I maybe should just take that. I was thinking of saving up for basics of survivability or improved repair party. But I actually think, yeah, Grease the Gears is just so much more useful. If you're wondering why I didn't have it already, Vigilance. Um, these super heals are so, so important to the survival of a Conqueror. And these do not heal torpedo damage very well at all. So, yeah, I really, really want to avoid torpedoes as much as possible. And here's the upgrades. So let's uh, jump into this just real quick. I did play a warm up game because I hadn't played Conquer for a bit and it went pretty well. Unfortunately, we lost, but uh, this ship is good. This is a very, very, very good ship in 2022 in World of Warships because it's just so difficult to kill and very good at long range. To me, the biggest thing that uh, ships need is long range. Um, they need to be good at long range these days. It's fine if they're just okay at long range and good at mid to close ranges, but they need to at least have the range to engage things outside of 20 kilometers at tier 10. I, I really do believe that, since not every game is going to be one where you can play at 15 to 18 kilometers. That's ideally where I'd want to play the Conqueror, by the way, is in that 15 to 18 kilometer range. You can make very good use of the concealment on this ship to constantly be going in and out of spotting, taking out targets of opportunity. Uh, you'll notice here on the mini map, right? 12.3 kilometer detect, pretty amazing. Um, also, when I do play my battleships, I like to make my mini map big. <laughs> Not quite that big, but uh, Cruisers, destroyers, I just need to know where things are. But when I'm playing a battleship, I really want to make sure my shots count. So that's why I have the minimap so big, so I can see the little X on the minimap right there. That's what I'm looking at all the time when I'm shooting. It helps me to lead in the vertical direction. Horizontal is still in front of me. Of course, I talked about that in the uh, aiming guide I made a long time ago now. That's a year and a half ago? Pretty crazy. I think uh, it's pretty lucky for me to be able to make these videos for you guys. So I'm really, I'm really grateful you guys enjoy watching them and uh, I'll hopefully enjoy continuing to make them for quite some time. The Conqueror, of course, just to talk about what makes this ship so insane is the high explosive. This is really why I think this ship is so amazing. All the other battleships up to the point Conqueror was released had the ability to do, I would say, in a good salvo, 10 to 15,000 damage to an enemy ship. Let's say, let's say they're broadside, right? 10 to 15,000 damage, I think, is a pretty good result from a Montana or Yamato into a broadside ship at medium range, 15 kilometers, let's say. Conqueror suddenly was able to do that with high explosive, which, of course, doesn't have the disadvantage of armor piercing where it can overpen. It can bounce, and uh, of course it can shatter, like armor piercing can also shatter. But even on a shatter, you're still able to get a fire. And well, 48% fire chance is pretty good with 12 guns. I think he's going to turn out. That's why I aimed pretty high. The downside of the Conqueror, although some of this is pretty accurate. The downside of the Conqueror, though, definitely is the dispersion at range. It's not as good as the uh, Montana would be. Even though it has the same or similar dispersion values, it's Sigma, which is part of the calculation, isn't quite as good. Uh, we do have to be careful of Republic AP since our Citadel was raised, right? So that was the nerf to the Conqueror a little while ago. They raised the Citadel. So we do have to be a little bit cautious when showing broadside now. When they ship released, of course you didn't, <laughs> which was ridiculous, of course. Yeah, 10,000 damage at 20 kilometers. No fire, but still, pretty good result. The um, 
Yeah, I really don't know if I think that that was a nerf, though. Because while they buffed, or they nerfed the Citadel and made it so you had to uh, actually be aware of showing broadside, they buffed the heal in return. Oh, we might absolutely annihilate this gearing. Yeah, so the HE also is nuts against DDs. We only hit 4 out of 12, and we took half his HP pool. Okay. Now, I'm going to be very cautious here, because there could be Torps, right? So, I know the Shima and Holland will likely spot them beforehand, so I'm not too worried. The other thing is, I'm not, I really don't care about fires, because we can fully heal them with our HP, or our massive, massive heal. So, I'm really not too worried. But what I don't want to do is push blindly into kiting ships. That's something I don't want to do. So I'm actually just going to turn away. And because of our concealment, even while on fire, we can easily do this. Get a quick shot into the Republic here. And I will use the armor piercing as well, just to show you what... Yeah, see, they instantly open up. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, so that's why you don't want to push into that. And, ooh, six full pens and a fire. The other thing... Even if we're getting the same or similar amount of damage that a normal battleship would get out of armor piercing, and we're getting it out of HE, we have the opportunity to light fires. Which, of course, on a full fire prevention battleship at tier 10 is still going to do around 10,000 damage. Ping there, just to show that there's a submarine. Maybe I'll even uh, put a drop here or something. Just so people get the idea. I really, really don't want to be fighting an enemy submarine. Not alone. But yeah, the idea that you can do similar amounts of damage, alpha damage with the HE that other battleships get with armor piercing, and then the ability to light fires as well, yeah, it's pretty nasty. And having good range, good reload, all that stuff too. It's, uh, it's rough to deal with this ship, especially given the good concealment. And you'll notice how much we can heal back. And I'm not going to heal. Right? This is only half of my heal right now, which is pretty crazy. Um, I want to farm Adrenaline Rush, right? So at the moment, 24.6 second reload. If we look here, you can see it, the bonus we're getting. It's just a 6% boost to our reload. Just from sitting on, well, 3 quarters HP. Pretty good stuff, honestly. But the AP is also very good. I'm not one to use it very often just because the HE is so insane but I do really think the AP is quite good and I think that's because it's it's not the best dispersion it doesn't have the best pen but it has shorter fuses so what that means is the AP if it arms wow another 6k and a fire there kind of ridiculous um, if it arms then uh, the shell will detonate sooner than some other armor piercing shells. So you're going to get less overpens. That's basically what it means. In fact, let's swap and see if we can hit this Hindenburg. He's sitting a little broadside. He probably thinks we're just loading HE. And of course, we also have uh, Expert Loader, right? That is a huge, huge buff. Wow, 13k from Indy AP. That's pretty impressive. Unfortunately, we didn't get all our turrets. But let's see what the armor piercing can do. Yeah, there we go. Nice Citadel in. And the interesting thing is, I'm actually going to heal soon. <laughs> I should definitely be healing now. But you see 43,000 HP is coming back. He's got a double fire. We're not concerned, though. We're really not concerned. He's going to accelerate. And it's because of this heal that I think there's an argument to be made that this ship actually baits people into firing too long, right? This Hindenburg obviously wanted to finish me off, but he might have overstayed his welcome, although my teammates aren't really around here. So we also have to be a little careful, though, because we could easily die here. I really don't know the combat ability of the uh, new French battlecruisers, so seems like they have pretty good HE, though, considering the fire chance that we're getting lit on us. We might actually die here. Maybe while well, I was thinking they overpushed, I think I might have overpushed. Oh, we're definitely going to die. This Hindenburg's just going to block me. Rip. That's really sad, actually. Well, not the best first game, but uh, hey, mistakes were made. This ship can die. It certainly can die. He's probably going to load armor piercing and kill me here. 
That's what I would do. No! They're actually going after the Hindi. Or at least the Marseille. Marseille? Marseille? However we pronounce that. I think we might get away. Let's see. I need this fire to disappear. Oh, there's a submarine. Never mind. We lose. Unless we can juke it a little bit. Two, one, zero. Deal. I need like two ticks. Good. And then we will go like this. And they should not be homing anymore. See, this is the problem with a submarine, right? Like, there's really nothing to do other than die to him. So, it's pretty annoying. Oh, God, I'm going to eat this one because we slide on the border. And yeah, so we're flooding now. Submarines are something I very much hate in this video game because there's no gameplay here. At least this Marseille and the Indy, we're fighting them, right? I'm not fighting this sub. He's just farming me for free. And there's literally nothing for me to do other than die. And that's really sad to me because I want to play a video game, you know? But unfortunately, this game is not going so well. Oh good, they got them. They got him. All right. Yeah, so I'm just going to ping there again. Hopefully our summer read will come back. Oh my goodness, he's so close. Look at that. How insane is that? That's kind of ridiculous. I'm trying to lead him properly. Let's see. On HE, I need to turn my turrets. Nice, got him. Okay. Good job, Hindi. Thank you, man. That hydro was so clutch. See, and that's the thing. They, <laughs> I was thinking the guy was so far away, and yet he was like two kilometers away from us. Submarine game design is so stupid, but we all know that. Wargaming doesn't, but we we all know that. Um, but back to the Conqueror, the depth charges seem okay. I'm not really one to talk about the combat ability of surface ships against submarines. You'll notice in the uh, Sherman review I really didn't talk about that, and that's because I don't think there's much gameplay <laughs> there, so you're kind of at the mercy of the submarine. And that's why AA is not really talked about by me either. It's just you're at the mercy of the other player, even though it's an online PvP game. But 85k in this kind of game, I'm okay with that so far. This uh, cyclone is a little bit rough to deal with. I actually might go for blind shot here. Well, pseudo blind shot, right? It's not really. Since the uh, CV is spotting. Of course, we're looking at the X on the minimap and trying to line that up where we think he's going to go. That's reasonably accurate, too. CV got the reset. And we whiffed. Too bad. So, Cyclones are actually not the strong suit of a Conqueror. Conqueror is only tanky when it has a heal available. As soon as its heal goes away, it's suddenly a tier 9 battleship worth of HP with honestly worse armor than most tier 9 battleships. So, it's really clutch. The super heal has to carry you. That's, that's really it. And that's why I do think Vigilance is so important. Of course, if the torpedoes home in on you, there's really not much you can do to dodge them other than try to time your damage control correctly. But uh, against normal torpedoes, having Vigilance is very, very nice. You could even run Legendary Mod instead of the Concealment upgrade, and that would give you the ability to turn much quicker. If you've played both Thunderer and Conqueror and are wondering why the Thunderer feels so much more agile, it's because it basically has the Legendary Module built into it, the uh, Conqueror Legendary Module built in, so that's why it has a much better rudder shift. And I do like that for Conqueror, but honestly, the, I really do just enjoy the concealment. Having 12.3 at tier 10 is very, very nice. All right, Midway got the Hindenburg, which is good. Now we don't have to worry about that as much, and we're going to actually try and help our Hindenburg against 
this Salem. I don't know how healthy he is, but a blind shot here could be really clutch. Well, the Republic's come up pretty quickly as well. I think Salem's moving. We'll guess there. Wow, that is some accurate blind shot right there. Wow, look at that. I mean, obviously these ones aren't. Let's see, what do we get? That was nearly 10k. That's pretty good. Our Hindi probably dies because fighting a Salem at close range is rough in any cruiser. Uh, he got the Shima. And they... Go oh my goodness. Wait, Hindi torp the Salem. Man, I've got some good teammates in this one. That does not always happen, mind you. But uh, I got some really good teammates in this one. And since we're so far ahead on points, they really need to come at us. So... The one thing that's going to save us this game is actually our carrier. So I really do want to make sure he stays alive. And I'm just going to continue taking blind shots. So I don't think I actually need to go towards the cap right now. Our sub's doing good stuff there. I'm just going to continue to push south. But yeah, Cyclones are weird in this game. <laughs> it's this weird thing where they're, they do help you push in. But at the same time, the gameplay is so far away in normal uh, everyday games that it takes forever to finally go and meet the enemy. Alright, let's try there. One hit. That's okay. Minute 58. Oh, I waited too long. I waited too long. I'm dumb. I definitely didn't think it was going away right now. We might get crushed here. We'll see. I thought, uh, yeah. Total misplay here. Let's see. Yep. Citadel. Guaranteed. So, you see how taking a Citadel means that our heals no longer are very useful? Torpedoes do the same thing. So, that's where the buff slash nerf, if you're playing correctly and don't eat Citadels like I just did, the, uh, reworking of the Conqueror Citadel is actually a bit of a buff because you get such an amazing uh, heal because of, outside of that. Full pen damage is healed back much more than it used to as is uh, all fire damage is full. 16 into my angled superstructure. That is not good. That means I do have to use this heal. That's a little bit more than I would expect actually. That's pretty lucky salvo from this uh, Ohio. Ohio's a good battleship, but I don't know if it's quite that good. So, pop the heal just to be safe. We used it in such a time where... Wow, again? That's incredible. I'm shocked. At, I'm, I'm actually shocked at that. But we take him out. Our HE's doing good damage. Hindenburg's got a good crossfire. So there's really not too much to say here. I think we've won this game pretty handily. The AP's pretty good, though. I mean, we Citadel the Hindenburg. It's really, really good against cruisers and pretty decent against battleships, too, at closer ranges. In the first game, the warm-up game I played before this, I actually did 70k to a Yamato in one salvo. <laughs> at six kilometers, though. So it was very close. Popped around an island, and he was flat broadside. Uh, is it worth... I'm going to use one more HE, and then I'm going to swap over. And I'm leading really poorly. Doesn't matter though, we got a fire. Um, something that would be overpowered, but I would love, is if gun feeder was improved, like the Americans have. The improved gun feeder is so nice on American, but on American ships. 75% instead of 50% swap time is nuts. And now I kind of have the wrong ammo type. Well, we'll go for a superstructure. And I am using Cunningham, so. Our midway is almost on a Kraken, actually. I'm going to see if I maybe don't take this one from him. I need to put him low enough that that bomber can get uh, a Kraken. Oh. Oh. Everyone is dead. Okay. I This guy just needs to die. Right up. How did they all die? I don't have a heal. Um, guys? Oh, no. Oh, no. Are we going to lose this? He's got HE. Does he know?
Put him to nine. Put him to one and a fire, and he ticks out? All right, I can't quite give him the Kraken, but... Uh, okay, I also need to not repair this fire. That is super, super duper important here. I can't repair this because of the carrier coming in. Oh, and he's going to get such a good drop on me here. Because I'm on the border. So, Midway is going to crush me here. I think. Not too bad. And the thing is, Conqueror has no AA. Right? So he can just farm me for free. Yeah, we have 44% of what we had left. Which we don't have much to begin with. Uh, I just kind of have to try and hope he dodges. Or hope he whiffs. Slow down, turn in. Oh, he's going to whiff this one? He did whiff it. Okay. So now I still have my damage control available for his next strike. Whatever it may be. And it's very important that we angle properly to the next one. Which is why I'm trying to get off the border. That makes me very predictable here. I think the... He'll probably come with rockets again, actually, just because they're fastest, and he's probably pretty far away. 56 seconds left. Even if they get in A, they don't win, so he has to come kill me. If it's torpedo planes, I need to go bow or stern in. If it's dive bombers, I need to go broadside. Rocket planes, I need to go bow or stern in as well. So let's see. 30 seconds. Does he make it in time? Okay. Dive bombers. We can deal with dive bombers. Hard turn. Force him to catch us broadside. He doesn't have a lot of time. 20 seconds. He's going to try and come from behind me. So hard turn is all I can do. <laughs> yes, we win. Okay. Not, I mean, it's pretty good damage, actually. But, uh, yeah, fireproof? Dreadnought, not bad. Not a bad game at all, actually. Yeah, our midway played really well. And our two Hindenburgs as well. What a close game. Honestly, I'm pretty happy. Even if we lose that, I'm pretty happy. Because, uh... Close games don't happen terribly often anymore, right? Pretty good game, actually. Nice. I'm very happy with that one. Let's go for another battle. That's kind of one of the things about Conqueror, is once you're out of heals, man, it's just such a weak ship in comparison to other tier 10s. And it has no AA. That's the other thing. Even if I had... 100% of my AA strength left. It does not have any anti-aircraft. So it would have it would have been the same. He gets a free drop anyway. Man. I'm 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 really glad we won that one though. Too bad there wasn't just one or two more ships on the enemy team alive really far away. Could have grabbed ourselves a solo warrior real quick. <laughs> Those are pretty rare. And they usually I mean, most solo warriors are like that, where you're the last ship on your team alive, and all you have to do is live to win the game. That's what most solo warriors are. Um, I've only had one or two that aren't like that, where I've actually had to kill people on the enemy team to win it. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I live and I get a solo warrior. Nice. <laughs> uh, this game, they don't really have battleships, so I'm actually going to just load AP. So they don't have battleships at all. And even against, actually no, against Schlieffen and Slava, I still want HE, but since it's more likely there's going to be a lot of cruisers, I really, really want armor piercing. Only, well, there's two subs in this one, but no carrier, which is really good. And that means I'm actually going to take a bit of aggressive position. Our concealment 12.3 allows us to play in here. A little bit. We have to be careful about the enemy team pushing too hard here. Because if I'm sitting here trying to shoot these guys as they cross here, 
I'm a free farm, right? If I'm bow in here. So I have to be really careful of how aggressive the enemy team gets here. But uh, I really love getting the crossfires in at people down here. A lot of cruisers want to go to these islands here to play around, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Hopefully we get some spotting. Our submarine is playing pretty passive. I, I would think he could just go into the cap. <laughs> Nearly get it for free. Not quite. But that's kind of what I'm thinking of in early positioning, if you're wondering. Conqueror has such good concealment, assuming there's no carrier to just free spot me. I'm trying to get close enough to get a really nice early position to do a lot of damage. I might even take a lot of damage in return. But again, the adrenaline rush that we get helps us for the rest of the game. It's just free DPM. Ideally, I'd want to sit on half to a third HP if I wanted to really farm adrenaline rush, but still be kind of safe. That would give me 10... 15% um, 10 to 15% uh, reload buff and here we go Yoshino flat broadside and the slab is going down there too so we'll have to be a little careful of that bam good first salvo see the armor piercing is actually really good against cruisers we have no hope of penning the slava belt though <laughs> not at this range but against cruisers we're pretty all right and we noticed the Moskva and Hindi making pushes up north, so got to be a little careful of that. Oh, no. The Sherman Torps. Oh, this poor Hindi. That is a sad moment right there. I, can, I feel for that guy. Since we can't pen the upper... Or since we can't pen Citadel, I'm aiming for upper belt with the... Uh, Oh, I hope I don't block this guy. That'd be a really bad play by me. Yeah, okay, damage. And Sherman detonated. Interesting. I'm sorry, my man. So that probably means they back off here. More than likely. So I might take a slightly aggressive line. Their Schlieffen's coming back, so we have to worry about that. So with our two subs going in, and we probably think it's an enemy sub, um, I really want to get my battleship, our anti-submarine warfare, these depth charges into the fight, because they can really help win engagements between submarines. And once our subs have free reign, it's just easy peasy for us to win. I'll swap over to the armor piercing, actually, if this wasp is going to be chilling broadside. Notice the concealment advantage we have here. We actually can outspot him. <laughs> it's kind of insane. Although Schlieffen pushing in is spooky, so I'm going to start uh, turning out. We have 32mm plating. If he has IFHE, he just prepends us everywhere. I really want to hit this Moskva, though. Might not be possible. So we'll go for Hindi instead. And then we'll go back to the HE for the Schlieffen. Shatter bounce. Unfortunate. He did turn in, though, to be fair. Those are Schlieffen Torps. Should have stayed with Arbor Piercing. That's the thing. Hard to know. Yeah, our AP here would have been nasty. Oh, well. Oh my goodness, he got one shot. Is that the GK? Might have been the GK. So we control the north here really, really well. So there's a thought to be had. Should I retreat and uh, go try and deal with whoever's trying to push into B from the enemy team? And I actually think that might be the right play. But at the same time, I've lost so many games of World of Warships on this map where I assume my teammates have C under control and then the enemy team that has a, you know, Moskva dug into this position just goes and kills the, my entire team here. And they all walk into them one by one, that kind of thing. So I'm going to try to go back a little bit. But I'm going to cut through the cap here. Maybe get a cheeky little angle on this Moskva here. 
and we're gonna swap to the AP. I love, I actually love gun feeder. I call it expert loader because that's what it used to be called, but it's such a nice skill to have, especially on Conquer, but really on a lot of battleships. The HE is not bad on most of the other battleships, and for Conquer, its armor piercing is very good as well, even though HE kind of is the primary ammo type, right? Oh, is our Wooster going to back out flat broadside to a Moskva at like three kilometers? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, he did. Actually, he kind of got away with it. That's kind of funny. All right, let's try again. Indy broadside. Let's see what we get. You can see just how nice the concealment is. He didn't even see me. Oh, surely that's a Citadel. And look at that, we're actually unspotted. <laughs> Crazy. Nice, they got the Moskva. They will be forced to retreat from here. And I don't have a shot anymore. Too bad. Maybe I can catch this Stalin? So, I haven't had the best start, but our team has started very, very, very well. Yeah, I'm going to try and shoot this Stalin while turning out, and then my next shot will be for the Des Moines. If he ends up getting spotted. Or the Schlieffen. Either one. But now that we know we're not going to get flanked from here, the Hindis has to run. It's uh, pretty good for us to contest whatever's in B. And I was hoping to catch the Stalin, but it looks like I didn't. Kind of failed at that. But we might get a nice shot into the Hindenburg here. Who doesn't know we've opened up this angle? Let's see. Turning out a little bit. And now we're going to hard turn out so that we don't just show flat broadside to the Schlieffen. Man, no Citadel again. I was a little high on the aim, probably. But uh, still good damage. And I'm going to slow down here, since we can actually uh, shoot over this into the Schlieffen side. He's dark, but that should be good damage. And it was. Very good. So we're going to take a little bit of pain here from the secondaries. <laughs> it's kind of the dream of every Schlieffen player to catch a Conqueror or a Republic because the damage output is just ridiculous uh, from the secondaries, since they all full pen. Stalingrad is flat broadside, and I'm actually going to click away, so I'm not actually locked on here, to hopefully not give away I'm shooting at him. That's something you can do, is to kind of lock on only when you're going to shoot, and then click away. And that way the priority target is only showing a number for a split second. Wow, we actually go dark here. Man, this concealment is ridiculous. And Des Moines should be dead. And he is. Alrighty. So now Conqueror with the uh, special commander. What's his name? Cunningham. If you get two kills, you get an extra heal, which is insane for this ship. And if you get, uh, if you get a Wither, you get a 10% reload buff, buff, something like that. I think at this range I can pen. So I'm gonna actually wait for him to go flat broadside. I'm gonna try. Not, we don't have the best dispersion, but we will try. We got it, nice. 27K, pretty good stuff. I'm actually using the armor piercing this game. I, I honestly don't use the AP this much, usually. <laughs> We're just getting broadsides. And that's the nice thing about Conquerors, it's just so flexible. If you're into one of those ma matches where, uh, uh, we need to swap to the HE right now, and that's not enough lead. Uh, if you're in one of those matches where you have the, uh, where you have bow on battleships and that kind of thing, it's pretty easy to just load the HE and, uh, farm an insane amount of damage. But if you're, uh, if you're catching broadsides, load the AP, man. That's that's as much me telling you guys that as I am telling myself. 
because I'm having a great game here and I've mostly used AP. I'm keeping HE loaded because of this submarine though. If he pops up, I really want to have HE because it's just going to do more damage. But I think we should get him with those depth charges right there. Very good. Very, very good. Speed increase. I guess we have a speed increase now. I actually don't know everything Cunningham does. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, HE salvo. And then we'll load the AP again. And look at this, another 141K. The flexibility that this concealment gives is so, so wonderful. Not enough lead. The shells are floaty at range. Definitely floaty at range. But I, I like the Conqueror as a ship. I just don't like the... I don't like how easy it is to just HE spam. <laughs> and so that's why I don't play it much, because I don't enjoy that HE spam playstyle all the time. I can enjoy it, like I've enjoyed it in this video, but it's not something I want to be doing all the time. So that's why I don't play Conqueror all that much. But it's a very good battleship still. Let's see if we can catch this guy. Uh, did I leave that enough? Not quite. Oh, we still got the lucky citadel in right at the edge. But yeah, not not um, overpenning nearly as much as uh, something like a Monty or Ohio Yamato. All these things is pretty nice. It still overpens though. Don't get me wrong. Like if you catch a broadside Smolensk, you really should load the uh, HE. Because the HE has enough to Citadel, uh, Minotaurs, Austin, Smolensk, Colbert. So if it's broadside at close range, you're still not going to do much damage. With the armor piercing, I should say. It's the HE that you want to be loading there. But it's nice to have the option. I'm just assuming this Yoshino is going to die before my shells get there, so that's why I didn't aim for him. Nice! Nice couple of games here in the Conqueror. But yeah, I, I do think, you know, this is a bit of an outlier ship compared to everything we've looked at so far. Everything I've looked at so far in this one take series, if, if you didn't know, I'm trying to go in order of ships released uh, while talking about them. It's a bit of an outlier. It's, it's, to me, the start of the, okay, what are you thinking? What's going on here? Um, but pretty good game here, too. You know, not not insane levels of damage or uh, record-breaking stuff. Unfortunately, I wasn't actually doing this during during that initial play there, but it was a really good game, a couple of games regardless. Um, just so you guys, if you're curious, I have, when this loads, we'll take a look quick. Yeah, I... We'll take a look quick at what I'm averaging, because it's it's an insane damage farmer. It really is an insane damage farmer. 167 over 327 games, 71% victory. Like, it's a great ship, dude. It's a really, really, really strong ship. And uh, most of this is solo. If you guys are wondering, I do play most of my games solo. Every once in a while I'll div, but it is not uh, usually what I do. So pretty high on the average damage and win rate too so it's not like it's just a damage farmer it can definitely carry and win games so that is the conqueror and that's the one take um i don't really think this ship should have the he that it does as you saw the armor piercing is still quite good but i mean it's in the game and if you're looking for a pretty strong versatile easy easy enough to play you can get quite good performances by only loading HE and just spamming that at battleships, you're going to get a lot of damage regardless. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but it's still a really strong ship in 2022. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Entertaining. Maybe you learned a little bit about the play style of this ship or how I like to play it. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.